bombing a night on the town. I think possibly the first time I saw her at the volcano. I wasn't in that bar, part of the bar, but I could hear her giving the customer a real rock up. And pretty soon afterwards, I heard a clatter of plates and, and, and a person leaving in a hurry. <laughs> Apparently, she picked the dish up from him and told him to fuck off <laughs> before it even finished. <laughs> I have invited men outside for a bowl of fisticuffs now and then, but they get up your nose, men, don't they? Don't they, Georgia? That pain's in the ass. You want a piece of me? You want a piece of me? Look who I've got! It's a coop! <laughs> it's a coop! I'm a my life down in no hill from my friends. I'm just proud of myself a wee bit to be asked to be in a play at 80. It's my lucky draw. <laughs> oh, I just want to tell you, I'm 78 today. Right now, there's Dad. My father was a hoofer, a tap dancer, born on the 25th of November, 1879. Wow. I know. How old was he when you were born? 63. And he died 18 months later. The only difference he made for me was that I was born youngest to six. That affected my childhood simply because my mother loved the boys and there was nothing more she loved than when they came home with their families and everything like that and there was lots of beer, lots of food and lots of singing. I realised that the only way to get my mother's attention was to become a bass baritone at four, which I did. I had to surpass the boys. In fact, singing Old Man River's been a standard of yours, hasn't it? It has, in E flat, which for a woman is interesting. I, I was abused at nine. I, I said, Mum, Ken did this to me last night in bed. And she said, no, he didn't. <laughs> how, how, do you, how do you like those apples for a double whammy? So I behaved like a, an abused child who wasn't listened to. And I began thieving, not brushing my teeth. You become a loser. <laughs> yeah. You're, it's it, it it's imprinted you. on your soul, yeah. not on your forehead, but yeah. on your soul. Yeah. You are worth nothing. Mm -hmm. So I've had a bit of work to do. You know, I mean, I've, I've, mm. I've had a bit of work to do. Mm. Where were you living? Martin, Martin, change here for Wanganui. Martin, Martin, bloody awful town. When you were 12, you um, did your first play? I did. Miss Prism, in the importance of being earnest, did I what? Love it. Sure I did. 12, the stage, I mean, ah, I found my calling. I loved it. I loved it. 12 years of age, Mr Kissel must have thought I was able to do it, otherwise he wouldn't have asked me. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, I started work at 14 as a telegram girl. And then I became a telephone operator. Tolls here, number please. Uh, could I have 01200 volt? Just a moment, connecting you now. And singing became a, a, a gig alongside acting? You worked no, them both together? No, it didn't come in to being until 1966 when I began work as the front person for a children's program merry-go-round at WNTV1. Wow, that's very early television days. And you were, there was a singing role and a presenting Well, I began singing there. David said to me, do you sing? I said, of course, as you do in television. Do you ride a horse? Yes, of course. Do you bullfight? Yes, yes, I'm good.
Why did you go to jail? Oh, for marijuana. They said I had 5,000 Buddha sticks. Well, I never counted them. They would never have found my um, fingerprints because I never touched them. And so it was really uh, uh, given two suitcases in Thailand and told to go to Auckland. I did 16 months because I got eight months off for good behaviour and helping murderers on their guitar when they had a down moment. We had 53 residents. Some were brighter than others, let's say that. But the druggies seemed to keep, keep together because, as one of the officers said, we really should have a training period to be able to deal with uh, drug people because they've travelled and they're quite sophisticated. Every girl that I met in the can had been sexually abused by somebody. Men in this country have got to start waking up to the fact that they don't own women's bodies, whether they're sister, aunt or mother, cousin or niece. Get your hands off, fucking assholes. All my life's a job, always has been, never stops. Oh, look. Do you remember these people? You were on the show quite often. I was. Boom. And then there's Steve my checkbook to the cap. David liked me. And he was told by the bosses, you know, that woman's just come out of prison. And David said, yes, she's experienced. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's nice. He was and such a nice man. I must have volunteered my services and they were accepted and I worked for the volcano for about eight and a half years. I had the volcano for 23 years. It had a beginning, a middle and an end. Yeah, and I employed Janice, eight years, seven months. She was good fun, really reliable, very dependable, a bit of a laugh. A tough person to employ or...? Not really, you just had to make sure you worked with her. Some people say that you ran the place a bit like a governess. They can say what they like, I still got paid. I worked because I had to, but I also worked because I bloody enjoyed it. And sometimes they'd have, ask me to sing, and, and they might scrupulously leave a small tip when they paid the account. It was a and stage for you though, wasn't it? It was the st a stage for me, but I've given them my knees. Blow me a kiss from across the room. Tell us about um, men in your life. You, ah, you're single now, aren't you? Talk about the Army, the Navy and the Air Force. Um, I am single. I am single. I choose to be single. Simply because I believe that in any relationship, it's a stream of concessions and I just don't swim in that stream. Presenting... Janice. Hello. Hello, sweetheart. Call me at six on the dog. Yeah, you are. It's by Robin Judkins, about Robin Judkins. And we are all With Robin, Robin Judkins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she's absolutely sharp as a tack. I wouldn't be dealing with her if she wasn't as sharp as a tack. But the thing about Janice is that as she gets older, she improves with age. She really is. The thing I, the reason I wrote her into it was because she's acerbic, she's snappy, she'll eat you alive if she's got a chance. Deceitful Catholic. Secret? Deceitful. Deceitful. Shall we do a little... Why not? Yes, well, yeah, come on, yeah, Leah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are we ready? <laughs> okay, I've got my yeah. ukulele out. Beautiful. Now, ladies and gentlemen, get a load of this. Yeah. Early shell from the ocean shining in the sun covering the shore. <laughs> You'll carry on, won't you? This won't be your swan song. Why not? I'm fucking 80. I saw that. 
she may say it's her swan song. <laughs> I'd say it's the beginning of the end. <laughs> you want redemption. You must pay for all those souls who didn't pay. I don't want to get up on stage and have to perform for people. I'm sick of singing Happy Birthday. I'm sick of singing Blue Smoke. I'm sick of singing Oh Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz. Can you go and get rooted? I don't want to do anymore. I don't want to do anymore. I haven't got it in me. But if I got a good role, I would. It was fabulous. <laughs> yeah.